some scale detail. This is a real cheap, uh, um, easy way to make your model stand out above the rest. On all fabric covered airplanes, when they put the fabric on, they actually stitch around the ribs. And uh, what this does is they do it a lot on the under camber because it helps hold the fabric up to the bottom of the rib. Um, it also keeps the fabric from flopping around, coming off the ribs, ballooning up, whatnot. Um, so when they did it, uh, the average was three inches spacing. Um, I think the FAA states that you can do three and a half inch on modern planes up to a certain, it's based off of miles per hour. But on the World War I stuff, they did usually three inch spacing. And then in the areas of the prop wash, they would cut that in half. So they would do inch and a half spacing. So now I'm doing a third scale airplane. So my three inch spacing would be one inch on the model. Um, and then in the areas of the prop wash, I would do every half inch on the model. That would equate out to my, my three inch spacing. Um, so what I like to do is I, I just use regular aliphatic resin. Um, this is just Gorilla Glue. Um, it was what was available at Walmart at the time. Uh, normally I just use a, a generic glue. It can even be just Elmer's White School Glue. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, you're just using it to emulate the stitching. Um, and then I'll put that on just a piece of plywood, put a glob on, and I use this tool. So here's the tool that I use. Um, and you notice it's just a piece of basswood stick, and I shave down the end to roughly a sixteenth of an inch at the end, roughly a quarter inch wide. Um, you can see here, this would be what I'd use on a third scale. On the other side, it's a little bit narrower, still sixteenth inch roughly. You'd use that on like a quarter scale if you wanted. Um, I normally make a new tool every time. I just made both of them so you can see both of them. Um, and <clears throat> if we come into the uh, computer, here's my three view. This is where I'll find the prop wash everywhere directly behind the prop. So I'll count the number of rib spacings um, to where the prop is. Um, I already got it figured out. So, but uh, then on the wing here. My prop wash actually comes out to this rib here, is where it comes out to. Um, so from here on in, um, I'll use uh, half inch spacing on everything. From this way out, I'll use the one inch spacing. So let me get some glue out. We'll put a few on. And it's best to, uh, you know, your first time, couple times, it's best to <clears throat> use a, a practice piece to make sure that you're getting it right. Um, and then I'll just start, put a dab there, get a little more glue on, roughly a half inch, put another dab, and you just keep going. Now you can measure this out if you want. Or you can just guesstimate. I'm just guesstimating. It's not that big of a deal. Um, nobody's going to ever come out with a tape measure. Um, so there's another one. You just keep doing that till you get to the end. Now I'll do some of the one inch spacing ones. Um, and it's, it's the same thing. It would start in the same spot. And uh, where they normally started was if it was a three inch spacing on the full size airplane, they would do half that distance from the leading edges where they would start their first and then just put it on and uh, that's basically all there is to do in that. I'll finish up the rest of this and then uh, I'll show you how to make the, the rib tape on the World War ones. it's really easy because it was just a straight tape um, on the uh, after World War I, they started using pinking tape, which has the little um, triangled ends on it. Um, and that, you can buy uh, pink it, that, and that sells them. Um, so once I finish getting the rest of this on, we'll take another video and uh, show you putting that on. All right? All right, we're back. As you can see, the glue is dried on the wing. Um, it loses a lot of its... Uh, Thickness when it dries as the water evaporates off. So when you're putting it on if it looks like it's going to be a huge glob Don't worry about it. It dries real subtle um, <clears throat> So then the next step we have to do is you want to take the solar text and uh, 
I just cut off a chunk. Um, make sure it's big enough to cover the do in one piece what you have to do. Um, and then the lengthwise is the way that it'll tear real easy. So let me get this back up here. And what I do is I just take a uh, ruler and I lay it down and I make marks with my pencil. As you can see, um, I'm doing every three eighths of an inch. And then uh, <clears throat> you just take the a scissors and make a little nick where you want to start the uh, the tearing and then that nick gets it started and you'll see how easy it tears and it'll tear in a perfectly straight line and as long as you do it this way as long as you, I won't go too far, but as long as you do it this way, it'll tear nice and easy, tear perfectly straight for you. <clears throat> now I like to use the, uh, the trim iron for when I'm putting the strips on. Um, gives me a little bit more control, stuff like that. So, just lay it on where you want to start. Stack down your one end, stretch it out, tack down the back end, and then just heat the rest of it up. And now it's a little tedious because you do have to make sure you get in to all the little, little notches good so that it's all ironed down good. All right, so there now you can see I have the, uh, the tape on. I've set my iron down. And then I'll just take the razor blade Cut it off flush with the trailing edge there. And you have your tape on there. Um, super simple, super easy. 